everyone. I'm about to introduce author Jane Wenham Jones, and we're going to be talking about this book, Mum in the Middle. It was such a great book. I loved it so much. I can't wait to talk to her. And um, I laughed. I, I related <laughs> in so many ways, and I can't wait to talk to her about it. So everyone, here is Jane. Hi everyone, I am so excited because I am speaking with author Jane Wenham Jones and we're talking about her brand new book called Mum in the Middle and she has a copy of it. It is up on Kindle now. So let's see the cover of this book. I can't wait. This is a proof cover because well, this is the proper cover but it's a proof because the actual thing up a little comes bit up in September. Oh, there we go. Oh, I uh, love yeah. it. Love it. Um, I love the blue. It's on Kindle now, as you said. Yes. Um, yes. I will have the link uh, below. So all you have to do is click on it and it'll take you right to the Kindle and then you've got it. And uh, I want to thank you so much for talking with me. I love this book so much because I think that Tess is me. So, <laughs> but, but a little bit different. I mean, I'm 53. She's a little bit younger. Um, but I don't, my parents are no longer alive, so I'm not in the middle anymore, but I did spend some time in the middle. Now I'm just like the old one because I have six <laughs> children and they're all in their twenties. And now my oldest son is in his thirties and, and it just gets crazy from here. Who knew? Okay. You look pretty good to me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but it was such a fun book. I loved her so much. How did you come up with the concept of this, like of this time in our life? Well, I started it. The book took quite a long time to write because life got in the middle, um, <laughs> literally. Um, and it started off more of a focus as an empty nest book because my son had gone off to university and I really missed him. And I started writing about a woman because I just thought sometimes, you know, if you've been spent a really long time always with a partner, with parents, with flat share in education, it's, you know, must be a shock if you got to your sort of late 40s and you've never lived on your own and suddenly your kids all leave home. So it started off as a um, more of an empty nest book. But then I came across this phenomenon, the squeezed middle, the stretch generation. And the more I talked to people, the more I realized that it really is a thing. You know, a lot and lots of women have still got their grown up kids at home um, or coming back the boomerang generation because they can't afford to live anywhere else. Um, and elderly parents are living longer, needing more help. So it sort of changed into this, this squeezed um, middle book. And it's a funny thing with my books that every one of them, something that has begun life as fiction, has come to pass by the time the book's published. <laughs> Um, sometimes that's a bit awkward. Um, but in this particular case, I thought that I would have her mother perhaps diagnosed with dementia. And I thought to myself, I'm going to have to research that. But in the meantime, my real aunt, um, and I'm her lasting power of attorney because she hasn't got any children, was diagnosed with quite a, um, awfully quick, but quite, um, severe type of dementia and she just went from this bright intelligent woman who speaks fluent Greek who's published author who did the times crossword every day to somebody who couldn't communicate and so I was able to draw on that as well um for inspiration wow yeah I mean my mom died in 2011 so I was in my 40s and um, she died very quickly from cancer. And I think of it now, now that I have these older children, and I was like, in a weird way, I'm kind of spared that because my mom was, <laughs> my mom was a very needy person. <laughs> we talked a thousand times a day, if not texting. And, you know, so I'm like, I can't even imagine if I'd be in this stage and then having, you know, her and, you know, I felt in the middle then, I, I don't know what it would look like nowadays, but you, you know, that's all my friends. I mean, we are all there because parents do normally live longer so it is but you know with your children getting older like I when your son left like I had no idea I feel like nobody told me what it was going to be like you know when he left when my children started leaving me <laughs> when they started. no I know because when they're 
small. You just can't imagine, can you, what it is like to have an adult child. And of course, it's just as the same, but sort of worse somehow. I mean, he's back now. He's back. He's one of these boomerang <laughs> generations. You know, he's, um, yeah, bedroom, down the hall, you know, looking like something unspeakable. Washing, shoes, shoes. They have so many shoes littering the hall. But actually, I like him being at home. I know, right? We can't complain because when they get home, then we're like, can we cook for you? Can we, you know? And I love, that's why I loved her so much because, you know, she had moved, Tess had moved and thinking, okay, now I get to start this new life. But then her children kept coming. And I love the interaction with her daughter because I have daughters. <laughs> <laughs> How many kids have you got? Six. Six? Yes. Wow. Yes. But my um, fifth child is leaving for college in August and I will be down to one. So, ah. and he's 15. So, you know, I do still have one, but as each one, I keep thinking, okay, in August, I got to say goodbye again. Every time you have to say goodbye, it's still hard. Mm. You like, it doesn't get easier, you know? But they'll come back. I <laughs> You know what though? My older children, some of them came back. Some of them didn't. I, my older sons didn't come back. They joined the service. They went in the military and okay. they now have families and lives. And that's another thing like Tess finds out. You can only tell them what to do. Like sometimes I'm like, but I want you to do this. But then you realize you can't like make them do that. Like you can't make no. them do anything anymore. Right. We're so used to being able to say, this is what you're going to do today, but it, it isn't what you're going to do. No, I still say this is what you should do today. <laughs> I want to read for everybody that's for, I got to read it off my Kindle because that's how I have the book. But I love this first page. And yesterday, I wanted to ask you too, because yesterday for us was Father's Day. Do you have yes. Father's Day also at the same time? Yes, it was here, Father's Day here too. Okay. I know our Mother's Days are a little off though. Like I think you're a week before or a week after our Mother's Day. I, I thought that I saw that. but Yeah, no, Mother's Day is different, but we had Father's Day yesterday, yes. Okay, so I thought this was kind of appropriate anyway, because I was reading this yesterday. And um, so she, oh, you open up the first chapter with it being Mother's Day. And <laughs> this is so cute. So you say, Mom, I want to tell you on this, your special day, how much I do appreciate you in every way. I may not always show it. I may forget to phone. But today, I just want you to know. And then it stops. And she says, ah, they may fleece you, your kids. They may fill your spare bedroom, the one you need to turn into an office with their junk and unstrung guitars. And empty a fridge in one sitting and spill cider on the new rug. But when push comes to Mothering Sunday, shove they come up trumps <laughs> and it's true it's true because i know on mother's day i'm going to hear from all six of them eventually like they all get around to it so i love that i love that you opened it with mother's day because it's all about tess and it's all about her learning this new chapter of her life and the last line of that little poem that he'd written was oh, right i didn't read the last line yeah and i need a loan i need another loan <laughs> yes <laughs> Well, what did you love about writing Tess? Um, I think it was good to be able to draw on some of the things that actually had happened. I was able to draw on my own experiences as a mother and as a niece, equivalent daughter to somebody. And I always think it's fun writing about ex-husbands because you can, you know, have your revenge. <laughs> yes. Not that I have any ex-husbands, but you know what I mean. Um, and I quite liked, I liked the characters in it, actually, which were inspired, some of them, by real people. Although I don't, I don't actually take an, a person wholesale from life, but I take aspects right. of different people and sort of mould them together. So I enjoyed writing the local newspaper strand because I've written for a local newspaper myself. Yeah. Yeah, so I that loved was... her figuring out the friends thing too. I mean, I love that I do have ex husbands, so I did enjoy that. I enjoyed her <laughs> journey with that of trying to figure out because, you know, as we get older and you start having some, you know, different perspective on life, and you know, she went through all of that. And but I love the friends because we're in it. You know, did you? I don't know if this happened to you, but when I was in the midst of raising my my teenage children, um, I didn't have very many friends. Because I was so caught up in their life. But then you get to this life and you're like, oh, okay, well, now I have time. <laughs> well, I'm not surprised. If you had sick, I'm surprised you had time to eat. Let's <laughs> learn to have friends. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it it is. I think that we all get there though. Like the once the friend once the kids start moving out, we realize a different. It, it's a different time for us to have friends. I think. Yes. Yes. And make new friends. And female friendship is so important and so special. Yes. So um, you know, I I like writing about female friendship. Because yes. it, it is something very life affirming. Yes. And I love when she did the, um, this isn't a spoiler. And it's not really spoilers because this book is, you know, it's just fun. But um, when she had given that interview to the newspaper to, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to Gabriel. And then she was like laying there in the middle of the night like, ah, what did I say? I'm trying to make friends. I can't, you know. Yeah. This will probably be me at four o'clock this morning. I'll be thinking, oh my God, what did I say to that woman? I know her sense of humor. I just I fell in love with it. It was such a feel good book, and I know I read um, a review on Amazon this morning. I don't read them until after I'm done with the book, and I was shocked at the person who said that they didn't like the dementia part because I really thought you handled it very well. And I just wanted to tell you that if you know that is something that we're dealing with a lot. A lot of people are dealing. With. Thank you for saying that because I I looked at my reviews as I do obsessively all the time. No, I had a look. <laughs> weekends because the book was out and I had a look at the reviews and I saw the one star pop up and I thought okay well you know you can't please everybody all the time that goes to the territory but when I read it I was a bit sad about that because she'd only read five percent of it and said she was going to send it back and she was just obviously really angry and really upset that there was dementia in a book that was being billed by the publishers as hilarious but actually, if she'd carried on reading, she oh, will see that I didn't make any jokes about dementia. No. I didn't take the rise out of dementia in any shape or form. Obviously, I've drawn on one of my relatives' right. you know, torturous descent. Um, but actually, the way I've always got through my life, ups and downs, is with a bit of humour. Exactly. And I don't make jokes about it. It's a, the serious strand. Right. In an otherwise sometimes humorous novel, you know, so it was a shame really that she didn't give it a chance, I would say, I rather know, than judging. Right. And I hate when I read those because as a reader and I, I and as someone who interviews authors and I know your hearts and it's like if she would just would have hung on, you can't make a judgment that quick on a book. And, Mm -hmm. you know, how we deal, how I've dealt in my life with various things that have gone on, and including my mother and father who both died of cancer, if we can't talk about it and put it in some kind of perspective, you know, Mm -hmm. I I, I just, how do we get through that stuff? Like, I want to be able to not laugh at it, but laugh about, like, look back and have a a sense of humor about everything. And so I just wanted to tell you because I saw it and I was like, oh, that's not fair. That's not fair. I I, I thought you handled it so very well. And it's something we all, aging parents is something we all have to deal with. Of course, it wasn't the disease that anybody's mocking. It's like, it's like how you deal with it and how her family was dealing with it and dealing with her children too. And so she didn't, you know, she didn't give it a chance, but that's okay. I just want to tell you that I thought, I I thought it was beautifully done. I really did. Thank you. I appreciate that. (laughs) It's going to happen, you know. Those things are going to happen. We can't, we can't stop. Oh, that's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you've done, you know, a lot of writing. Okay, this is your eighth book, I guess? It is, yes. As, I mean, I saw you a journalist. I mean, you've done lots of writing. Um, do you still, like you said, this one took a long time. So are you, like, working on something new at the moment? Or? Yes, I'm writing. This was um, part of a two-book contract. So I'm actually working on the next one that will come out next year at the moment. Oh, um, but I do do quite a lot of, um, I do, do columns and features and a bit of freelance writing and, you know, for various newspapers and magazines. And I speak and I interview other authors and celebrities. And I, so I've got a real sort of Jacqueline of all trades career. Um, so it's a bit of, I have the last book I had published was in 2014. So there's been a bit of a gap. Right. Um, but yeah, it's nice to have one out again. Who was your favorite um, interview? Oh, that's a difficult question. Oh, I really don't know. I very, I recently, do you know the series um, Blackadder in, in America, the, um, the comedy series Blackadder with um, Rowan Atkinson 
and uh, Tony Robinson. Okay. Uh, I recently interviewed him. Uh Um, Well, that was a good interview. And we have a very long-running radio soap drama here called The Archers. Uh It's on the um, radio. And I did an interview at the weekend with a couple of people from that, which was good fun. Um, I've done I've done hundreds, and they all have their you know their unique yeah, yeah. reasons I that like, you I like enjoy. To, yeah, I like to ask um, people who've interviewed like you know uh, important people, like you know stars and stuff. Nothing I've ever done really, but I talk to a lot of authors, and I think you guys are stars. <laughs> Oh, that's nice. Do you do it for your for magazines though? When you interview, is it for articles? No, it's mainly live on stage. I do literary oh, festivals. Wow! So I go around literary festivals, and I'm also part of something. Where I'm talking to you from is Broadstairs in Kent, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. that's about seventy or eighty miles from London. North. And we do something called Broadstairs Lit, which, which instead of a, um, a festival that's like um, all over five days or a week or something, it's events throughout the year. So every month or two months, we have one person come down and I interview them um, on stage. Well, it sounds so, like you have a yeah. very fun life, okay? <laughs> I try to. <laughs> Which is why you can write such great comedy books. I, I just like this. I mean, everybody's saying chick lit, and I'll say that. You know, I think it's because uh, I do think it's for women. And but yeah, you know. uh, the thing about chick lit is, is that you tend to think of it as um, sort of younger women looking That's for a man. That's um, true. So mine, my heroines tend to be older women dealing with the sort of issues that you might get in your 40s and 50s. Um, my very first novel, <laughs> Raising the Roof, she was 32. So that was chick lit. But the other four have all got older women. You know, you they've all been 40-ish genre. and onwards. Yeah, you should come up with your own like genre for that. Like own like little name. Like squeeze lit. Squeeze lit. There we go. <laughs> because people, authors. Be lit, so bag lit. <laughs> people in the South, um, women in the South of the United States, they started calling theirs grit lit because of grits. Grit lit. Yeah, because they eat grits. So they called it oh, grit lit. Okay. Because okay, I, mean, I think of grit as sort of, if we, if we describe a gritty novel, right, it's yeah. one that might be, you know, about yeah, no. <laughs> rounds or violence or. Or crime in a rundown. Yeah, no. We're afraid to go out at night. That would be pretty here. But you mean the pancakes? You mean like yeah? They're. I don't even know how to describe them. It's a southern breakfast food. It's kind of like yeah, they're sort of pancakey thing, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, sort of. So I don't know because I'm not in the South, but yeah, I love that those women have taken that on as their genre. You know, so it's like anybody can come up with whatever they want. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, show us the cover one more time because I want to show off this cover so much. I love it. I love yeah, the colors. Yeah. They did an amazing Just job. Just realizing my nail varnish is chipped, which is a bit upsetting. Well, your nails yeah. look better than mine. So. <laughs> Here we go. Are you happy with that cover? Because I think yeah, I love the cover. I love it. I absolutely love it. I love that blue. You know, it's going to look beautiful on anyone's bookshelf, and that's what we love about covers. <laughs> so thank you so much, Jane. I'm going to have all of Jane's links listed below, so you can find her wherever she is um, on social media. I will have, I like I said in the beginning, I'm going to have the link right to the Amazon, so you can get the Kindle now. The paperback will be out in September, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And then maybe we can, you know, get somebody to win a copy of that. And so that would be awesome. Be lovely. Yes. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. And I am, feel so blessed to be able to read your book. It was, I oh. had a, a great time yesterday. I read it all day yesterday and I, it, it made my day. <laughs> oh, thank you, Michelle. Thank you for thinking of me. Thank yes. You. you have a great day, Jane. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. She awesome. I love her so much. I'm telling you, this is such a good book. I'm going to have the links listed below so you can go get it. I mean, just go, if you're, if you're looking for a really lighthearted book that you can just dig your teeth into and not have to think too much and laugh and cry and, you know, it, it's awesome. So I just want to thank Jane. Thank you so much for letting me read your book. And um, like I said, all of her links are going to be listed below along with that very important Amazon link. Thanks, everybody.